it's not going well tonight. The video making, it's it's been abhorrent. It's been a, a giant, never-ending cycle of suck. Mother of God. I'm gonna do this one more time. If this video sucks, I'm gonna quit, and I'm not gonna make a stupid video. But we're gonna we're gonna try it. I'm gonna try and get through this. Uh, look, obviously they're still here. They haven't got a Blade HQ yet. They will. Um, this is going to Blade HQ. This is my own personal EDC. I've carried this knife for about five months. I love this knife. This knife and I have done amazing things together. We've rewired this whole shop basically. Um, you know, stripping, cutting wire. That's right. I do that with a knife. And um, it is SM100, as I've talked about ad nauseum about this knife, because I love it. Um, it's fantastic blade material. I don't know why people have a hard time getting this through their heads. Like, it's it's not uh, it, it's not a lightsaber, <laughs> but it is a, it's a very good blade, blade material. I don't know why. I don't know why people have such a problem with it. I know it's really expensive, obviously, but it's fucking awesome right completely flexible at 60 rockwell no steel can do that trust me i know and yes it holds a freaking edge is it does it hold an edge as long as m390 especially the way i heat treat it no but there's only like two or three other steels in the world that will I'm just saying, it's a it's a good blade material. That's why I use it. That's why I went out of my way to find it. That's why I buy it. Because it's a good material. It's very cool. It's very light too. I don't know. I don't know what people's hang up is. With it. I realize it's expensive, but you're literally like holding a, the future in your hand. Yeah, because if I have anything to do with it, trust me, there's going to be a lot more SM100 cutlery in the world. I got plans. Big plans. Oh, I made a name for this knife. It's called the uh, Draconis. A uh, little, little appreciation of one of my one of my little pet loves in uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, those of you that know me, you know I like that, that, uh, that fantasy crap. Yeah, that's it. It is a cool knife. I, I realized why you guys like it, because I like it too. It's a pretty sick. Um, anyway, um, so I've been EDCing this, the prototype. Excuse me for the prediums. I'm a big fan of this knife. It's a good knife. It's a good blade shape, good handle shape. Respectable size, smooth cuts well. The blade geometry on this one is a little not where I want it to be. Uh, the actual ones are going to have uh, better geometry. It's not bad. It's just I I have certain geometries I like to obtain in knives. I have no idea what the actual angle is that I set because I do it all by hand. So, But I know where I want it to be uh, because I made, ooh, I don't know, at least 200 knives now in my lifetime. Probably more than that. Um, uh, that was called a segue because we're segueing from looking at the prototype to looking at the parts. There they are. They are finally back from water jets. Beautiful L Max blades. Gorgeous titanium handle scales. Just waiting for machining. Machine me, Elliot. That's what they're saying. Machine me. Come on, machine me. I'm sorry if that got weird. Um, it wasn't weird for me, so it shouldn't be weird for you. I'm probably going to make this one up this weekend, uh, if I get time, uh, amongst the other things I have planned to do this weekend, but uh, all of which are making knives. <laughs> That's the way it is around here. Yeah, I don't I don't have, like, days off. We don't, we don't do that. I don't do that. So, uh, I did make a... a kind of a really boneheaded mistake that I'll make sure I never make again as I didn't spot a hole in the uh, CAD for this tab so that means this guy is gonna have to go through and drill all of them create a template and drill all of them by hand yay that's gonna be really exciting but you gotta do what you gotta do we gotta make fixture plate for those so they can be profiled 
and uh, that's the uh, drop that they came out of. It's pretty cool. Some extra little steel bits in there to play with. We'll see. Bet there's going to be some uh, LMX Cure Dashies coming out of the shop. Some strange looking shit, probably. I don't know. What do you guys think? Fixed plates? About that big? So we've got some, some steel to play with there. Might do that. I haven't done a uh, fixed blade in a while. And I like fixed blades. Used to make a lot of them until I started making folders and then everybody started ordering folders. Yeah, good times. Not that I'm complaining. I like folders too. That's why I actually started making them. It's because I wanted one. I want this one. Sean, you lucky bastard. Like it's nasty. Oh, it's just it's perfect. Seriously, dude, you're gonna crap yourself when you grab hold of this knife. That's awesome. Some of my my nicer work. Um, I haven't really started anything else new because I knew that was coming back soon, all the prediums, and I didn't want to have a bunch of shit on the table to try and get through while I was working through prediums. Um, because I got to develop a little bit of work rhythm with the prediums, uh, you know, because there's a lot of them. Uh, I like, I, I think I've said it before, so all of last year I made 72 knives, and now I have 100 sitting here before me to make. Uh, now granted, there's going to be a lot of speed up in that process because, the, you know, my CNC is going to do a bunch of work on them. Uh, but there's still stuff that has to be done by hand. They all got to get ground. Um... I gotta drill all the holes out because uh, I do not trust my CNC to do that drilling yet. Uh, not really my CNC. I don't trust our our experience with uh, with the CAD program to do that effectively yet. Uh, I tried to run drilling uh, drilling programs and they didn't go so awesome. So I'm not feeling particularly 100% about it. And at this point, uh, we're not going to be messing up uh, you know $450 knives. <laughs> I'll just uh, I'll do them the if the way that I know they will come out properly. So, that's them. Uh, I gotta finish those guys up, sores. I got a lot of stuff to do around here, and that's why I'm not going to blade. Yeah. Um, I think that was everything that I wanted to talk to you about at this point in time. Um, dude, this is like my 10th time trying to shoot this video, so it feels like I've already said all this before, because I have. Searching, searching, searching. No, I think we're good. Do you feel, are you feeling satisfied? Do you feel satisfied with this video? With the information? With the level of composure of your host? Ooh, I like that. I'm the host. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I definitely gotta shut up now. This is getting stupid. But that's okay. Because you know what? Let me... Let's take a step back. Let me explain something. So, during the day, I have to sit in this chair, and I have to do CEO-type things. All right? I have to chase down vendors. I have to chase down heat treat. I have to chase down the guys at Waterjet. Right? I got to call people. I got to write emails to people. I got to get insurance and and taxes and and stuff that just really sucks. It is the business side of knife making, and it blows. Uh, I absolutely, uh, it's abhorrent to me. But then I get to go and I get to make things, and that's that's also very nice. Um, but there's a little bit of stress involved with it. I mean, at any given point, you could be working on a piece uh, for you know a twelve hundred dollar knife, and if you screw up that part, uh, you got to make another one. And especially when it's in really expensive materials like Damascus and and. Um, and Timascus and uh, SM100, right? You, you screw up a part and it's a big deal because you got to make a new one and then there's loss there. And so by the time we get to video making time, I'm a little on the fried side, uh, but I'm also ready to cut back. And I'm also cut back, cut loose. I'm also ready to cut loose a little bit, be a little cheeky, be a little funny, uh, be a little outrageous. Not that outrageous. Um, but I don't. I don't know if you guys have noticed, I don't take myself too seriously and I don't take knife making too seriously. Granted, it's my job, it's my business, you know, it's what I'm, what I'm devoting my life to. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a large part of who I am, but it's still not all of who I am. Um, and I don't treat it as such. Uh, so 
I like to I like to get in front of the camera now and uh, and be amusing for you people be your clown um, so we can all have a little bit of fun I mean it, this is a fun place actually to work um, Mark is actually really funny he does a great uh, George W. Bush impression shit cracks me up all day long uh, when the apprentice is here I mean you've seen what it's like that's not done for the camera that's the way it is it's back and forth banter that's generally insulting and funny uh, that's how we roll around here and at the point in time when I have employees because that will eventually happen I will have employees because uh, I, I know things are going to get crazy and, it's gonna, and there's just no way that I'm going to be able to do it all and uh, and uh, we're going to keep it loose right <laughs> it's not going to be it's not going to be like craziness granted I'm I'm demanding uh, obviously I demand a certain level of uh, of attention to detail and whatnot but um but I'm not like a jackass about it. I mean, I just calmly remind people that we're trying to make a quality product uh, and that they might want to go ahead and, and try that again. Uh, I do it to Mark all the time. He's trying to, to, to learn the mysteries of Kydex, which I in no way, let me, hold on. Okay, because I was talking last time and I ran right out of, of time. And, uh, and so he'd been trying to figure out how to do Kydex and I've, I told him, told him everything I know, but <laughs> still some of the sheets come out a little funky. And I'm like, yeah, so you, you might want to try this one again. No, you try again. Not so good. But, um, yeah. I think it should be fun. I mean, knives are cool. Knives are fun. Why be super serious about it? I mean, there's certain stuff that I am ridiculously serious about. Um, but on the other hand... It's all just small stuff, and you shouldn't sweat the small stuff. You just gotta let it happen, baby. You gotta let it flow, and that's how I think the best work ends up happening. Right when you just you just let it flow. Right, obviously you need to have technical abilities and technical skills to to execute the technical things that you need, you need done, uh, especially when building folders. But uh, when you do it long enough, um, it just becomes part of what you do you know so you recalibrating your shit becomes second nature you know checking the squares on your drill presses it's just you find yourself doing it automatically you know checking the uh, the angles on your grinder platens you just do it you don't even realize you're doing it I don't even realize I'm doing it anymore I'm like leveling out grinders and I'm like what am I doing Oh, that's right. Leveling this grinder. <laughs> and now I've rambled incoherently and talked about random things again. Son of a bitch. You know what I need? I need a director. I need someone here with the little, you know, clicky thing to be my director and yell, like, cut and stuff like that. I probably could edit videos and that might make them a little better. I don't know. What do you think? I pose this question to you, YouTubers. Would you like to see better production quality in my videos? Meaning, would you like to see um, uh, editing happening? Do you want like a, a title screen? Would, would you would you give two shits about that? I mean, I know like Browse does a title screen, uh, like Grimswell does a title screen, um, uh, Snooty has title screen stuff sometimes. Uh, Big's got logos in some of his uh, YouTube stuff. Uh, would you want to see that? Um, because it can happen. We could do it. I could start making them a little bit more. Uh, the word professional, I think, professional YouTube videos. I don't know. I've always kind of appreciated the sort of uh, uh, organic feel, uh, like what like what Jeff and uh, and Mike, Tough Thumbs and Gavco do. Um, I think it's good. I like it. It's very avant garde, kind of guerrilla video, uh, if you will. But it's not necessarily something that I have to do. So if, if you think there would be some added interestingness in, in doing a little bit of edit work, uh, obviously you can do it on YouTube itself. So I would I could do it. I could dig it. Can you dig it? I'm just saying. All right, that's enough. Uh, <laughs> see you later, YouTube.